Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at some really powerful features built into Blender, and in particular the game engine, which is really just a physics engine. And we want to take a look at the game logic, so we'll switch our view over here to game logic. And we have access now to these actuators and sensors and controllers, and in particular what we're going to look at are these game properties. They're really just variables, which if you haven't done any programming before, that's a way to keep track of uh, values like integers or floating point numbers, so a counter, like you might have in a game or you know a, some kind of mathematical operation that you're doing. So uh, with my mouse over here I can press control up arrow and then you can see it full screen then with my wheel mouse I'm going to scroll it so you can see it a little bit bigger. So just for starters in case you're not familiar with game logic I'll just do something very basic. I'll grab a sensor and I'll get a keyboard sensor and this is going to sense the key. I just held down the middle mouse wheel to move that over. So if I left click here, I can press the A key. So what it's doing, the sensor says, sense the A key. Basically, wait until the A key is pressed. All right? And then I wanted to do something. So doing it is, actu is the actuator. I'm going to do a motion actuator. And where's my motion actuator? Right there. So I'll connect these together. And this, so if, when the A key is pressed, I'm going to say rotate it on the Z axis by 45 degrees, like this. All right. So I'm going to do control left arrow to go right back to this default scene like this. I'll start the game engine with P, and then when I press A, it starts rotating it on 45 degree increments like this. All right, so control right arrow, and then notice it did it continuously. So instead, maybe I'll do this. I'll just press this uh, tap key like this in here. I'll go back, do it again, press P, and then when I press A, even though I'm holding it down now, it only does it each time that I press it instead of doing it continuously. All right, so I'll just leave that for now. But now what we really want to focus on is these properties or variables. So maybe I don't want it to happen right away. Maybe I want it to happen only after you've pressed the A key 10 times. All right, so let's go full screen into the game logic, control up arrow again, and Instead of connecting the keyboard directly to the motion, I can hold down the control key and then with the left mouse button I can just cross over that and then I'll remove that connection like that. So I don't want to, I want the keyboard instead of controlling the motion, I want the keyboard to increase the value of one of these variables or properties. So the way we do it, we have to give it a property associated with that cube, that object in the scene. And right in here, it comes up and it has this C float floating point property, but I'm going to change this to an integer because I just want simple number countings, whole numbers, no floating point representations. All right, that saves computer memory a little bit. And this is the name, so I'm going to come in here and just type counter. That'll be the name of our property. And in order to take advantage of the property, we need to have a sensor property and we need to have an actuator property. And so I'll add a property here sensor property and I'll add an actuator property like this. In this case I'm going to move this up in the stack a little bit. So well it doesn't matter we can just cross it over. So let's so when the keyboard is pressed I want to actually do something to the property. Alright so let's see what happens. In this case the value of the property when it first starts is equal to zero. All right? And then when the keyboard is pressed, I want it to do something to it. And so I want it to, I'm going to change this to add. And I have to, since the name is counter, I'm going to pick counter from the list. And what I want it to add is the number one. All right? So what happens is anytime you press this A key on the keyboard, it's going to come through and it's going to add one to the value of our property called counter and it's going to make it equal to 1. And then the next time it's going to add 1 and it's going to make it equal to 2. And it's just going to keep doing that. Every time you press the A it's going to add 1 to it. So the value changes. So then while it's changing over here what I want to do is I want to evaluate what's happening. I'm sensing what's happening to the property as it goes along. So I also have to pick counter from here. And I'm going to put in the number 10 and by default, here's how I'm evaluating it. You can evaluate whether it's equal to 10, not equal to 10, etc. So we'll just leave it the default is equal. So this says 
this sensor is saying, well, if the value of the counter, this property called counter, is equal to 10, then I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. All right, so now this is connected to that. But if it's not equal to 10, it simply won't rotate it 45 degrees. So let's go back. I'll press P. I'll press A once. So that's nothing. It's twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it starts rotating like that. All right. So only when it gets to the value of ten, and so then in this case, in the first uh, example, I put the tap so the keyboard wouldn't read it. Because if I didn't have tap, what would happen is, well, let me just show you. I'll take tap off and I'll go back here and I start the game. And if I press A once. doesn't quite do quite what I want. So let's come back in here. So I leave the tap on the keyboard sensor and I'm also going to put a tap on here as well. So that means that when it reaches 10 it's only going to rotate it once instead of continually rotating it. So I'm going to press P and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there it does. And it rotates it to 10. And then that's where it is so it's just always going to it's just going to stay there because i put the tap sensor other on it because without the taps without the tap sensor what happens is it since this says it's equal to 10 it's constantly equal to 10 in fact if i turn it off and do it again 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then if i press a again it's going to become 11 and it's going to stop because i'm evaluating whether it's equal to 10 or not so that should help you get started. These are really powerful tools, and if you're not programming yet, then this is a great way to get started because that's a lot of what programming is all about. You're just testing conditions. If this is equal to that, greater than that, less than or equal to this, then do something, right? And so it's pretty much straightforward. The game logic within Blender is super powerful, and you can do a great deal of things with it without it or even doing any Python programming whatsoever. So I'd recommend taking a look at it and uh, having fun. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.